What is up guys, I'm Rick Kakis, and today, one of the most iconic and sought after exotics in all of Destiny history, the Vex Mythoclast is back in Destiny 2 with some changes. So in this video, we're gonna be looking at exactly how the new Destiny 2 Vex Mythoclast functions and if it's any good. And so let's get started. And first things first, how do you get the Vex Mythoclast? Well, it's a random and very rare drop from defeating Atheon, the final boss within the new Vault of Glass raid just reintroduced into Destiny 2. If you want to know how to complete that raid, I just put up my complete Vault of Glass guide for dummies, every single encounter, secret chests, loadout recommendations, everything you need to know for how to beat the Vault of Glass raid. Definitely check it out, it's linked up above. But if you are lucky enough to acquire this thing, what does it actually do? Well, interestingly, the intrinsic trait is Timeless Mythoclast. This weapon fires a single bolt with each trigger pull, and it is full auto. So essentially, even though this is classified as a fusion rifle, it feels and behaves a lot more similarly to a slow shooting auto rifle. But that's not the only unique perk. We also have Volatile Battery, which basically massively increases the magazine size. And then we've got what makes this thing different from the Destiny 1 version. And that is a brand new perk, Temporal Unlimiter. Defeating targets builds stacks of overcharge. You hold reload to swap firing modes when fully overcharged. And in the alternate firing mode, you hold down the trigger to charge up and fire more powerful linear fusion rifle shots. So what the heck does that actually look like in game? Well, trying it out in PvP right here, as you can see, when I get a kill, that gives me three charges out of six of overcharge. And those charges seem to not disappear. Like you can see, I get a kill and I just kind of stand around and it really, really lasts a long time. So potentially it does, but it would really take a while for that to go away. Now, as you can see, if I have three out of six, I get one more kill and now I have the full six out of six overcharge charges. Then I can hold reload, you do a little animation, and now I basically have a whole new weapon, a linear fusion rifle. So I'm not able to shoot it as normal, now I have to hold the trigger and that's going to charge up a shot and as you can see, it's capable of one shot killing an enemy in PvP. And a body shot is going to do a pretty significant 144-ish damage. But you'll see that when I shoot this shot, my overcharge goes down from 6 to 4 and then if I shoot another shot it goes down to two left and then zero so you get three shots of the linear fusion rifle version and i mean hypothetically that sounds not too bad you're basically turning your primary weapon where you always have ammo into a special weapon capable of one shot killing for simply getting a double kill. Think of this as a juiced up kill clip except for instead of a damage bonus it completely changes your gun. Also, it's important to remember this is totally optional. You get to pick and choose the moment you turn this weapon into a linear fusion rifle. So if you like the normal version, you can just use that forever. You don't have to switch unless there are, you know, maybe enemies further away. You get to a good sight line. So that utility is definitely cool. So, is the Vex Mythoclast going to become the next meta choice for PvP? Well, I definitely think you're going to see this in the Crucible simply because it's a fun and super unique exotic, but there are some things holding this weapon back. Mainly, it's the fact that those two kills require you to use a pretty average weapon. This does 36 damage to the head from a pretty decent range at about right here. You're dropping down to 35, but that is the exact same precision damage as the high impact frame auto rifles, something like the Galren's right hand, and it shoots at the exact same rate of fire of 360. So basically what you have here is a reskinned high impact auto rifle, and those are seeing next to no play in 
PvP. Now, if you like those weapons, by all means, you'll love the Vex Mythoclast because it transforms into this crazy linear fusion rifle. But if you're not using those now and you're expected to get two kills with that in a meta with stasis and grenade launchers and all the crazy stuff out there, that is definitely the thing holding this weapon back. But moving on to PvE, this is where I think this weapon might have a home. So firstly, using you know a high impact frame auto rifle in a PvE scenario is really not that bad at all. It's perfectly capable of gunning down adds. Now, something of note, in the Crucible we had three charges given for a kill, but in PvE, the charges you get greatly depend on the enemy you kill. So, a normal rank and file red bar will give you about one charge. I swear I've killed like a war dog and it gives me no charges, so maybe two of those equal one charge. But if you do manage to kill a yellow bar, you're gonna get two and sometimes even more charges if you can kill like a mini boss with this thing. Obviously, you don't really want to be shooting a mini boss with a primary weapon. Well, at least not the first part of this primary weapon, because it really isn't too difficult to string together five kills or three kills in one yellow bar kill, get fully overcharged, and then switch this into linear fusion rifle mode, and that mode actually does chunk some enemies. Like, if you're fighting that mini boss now, and you put all three rounds and get all three headshots, you've done a pretty substantial amount of damage. You've basically done the equivalent of, you know, three arbalist shots or a few sniper rifle shots. But again, you're just using a primary weapon. Not to mention, another sweet feature of using this alternate fire mode is the fact that you are quite literally overcharging the magazine. And what that means is, let's say you have a full magazine and then you activate the overcharge mode, you shoot those three rounds. When those are done, you still have your full magazine. You will not need to reload this weapon. It's quite literally over the original charge, the original magazine of this weapon. So you can go right back into firing and killing enemies once those charged shots are done. And so if you're running this weapon, it kind of feels like you're cheating the game almost and running two weapons at the same time legitimately. Like if you use this and then a shotgun and then, I don't know, a sword, a machine gun, whatever, a rocket launcher, you have so many different possibilities for your build. You have a primary weapon, right, that can just function against the normal red bar adds. Then you also have this linear fusion rifle to deal with enemies further away. Heck, in the Vault of Glass, you know, when you are uh, doing oracles, you have to have something long range to deal with all of the different hobgoblins, right? So this thing, in that scenario, well, you get a primary weapon to kill all of the normal enemies in that encounter, and then you can switch it to linear mode to take down the hobgoblins, all with one weapon, and then you can maybe run, you know, a, a grenade launcher to deal with the groups of ads when they spawn, so the versatility of this weapon does legitimately open up some interesting gameplay possibilities. However, we also have a bit of a downside here, and that's simply because exotics have a lot of competition. Yes, this thing is cool, and frankly, I do think it's pretty good, but is it better than the Anarchy? Is it better than this Xenophage, right? I'm not exactly sure, and I would lean towards probably not. Would I give up my Anarchy to use this thing? In a real raid scenario, probably not. But am I gonna run this thing in strikes, in overrides, in battlegrounds because it's fun as heck and super unique and actually pretty decently powerful? Absolutely. This is definitely an interesting twist on an iconic weapon, but I don't exactly think it's gonna break into the top tier of the meta anytime soon. And so guys, that is it for the video. I hope you enjoyed and found this informative. If you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys wanna see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. If you wanna get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis. that's linked in the description down below. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video and as always, have a good day.